Enforce became popular because American quality had fallen down quite a bit. Import cars came in with a low cost, high quality car. And over the years, they maintained their quality and up their horsepower, up their looks. They're nice cars, they're fun to drive. And it's been good for both uh, imports and the domestic because now domestic companies have had to bring their quality up online and bring the fun back into their market. The import cars were just starting to get popular out west in California. And uh, it just, you know, it was an inexpensive way to do cars opposed to doing the muscle cars and some people that didn't have the funds to do some of the American cars at the time. So, you know, when the Japanese came over and, the, and you know, they had some cheaper cars to offer, people couldn't afford the American muscle car. They maybe picked up a little Datsun or a little Toyota and that's kind of how it started. Import scene started in the late 80s, early 90s, um, back with the uh, you know 87, 88 CRX in California. I hate to admit that it became mainstream after the movie we've all seen, but um, you know I think it really did help the sport. In fact, we appreciate it, and even sometimes we do diss it, but it did do a lot for the industry. If I had the money, I'd definitely uh, trick out a car. I mean, it's a lot of fun to do. You can do whatever you really want with it, and we all know how you know popular you get with a car. Well, I have a 2000 Civic Si, and um, pretty much uh, what I we, what I did was I uh, to get a little originality. We, we did a total paint job on it. We changed it. it was originally all black. Um, threw on um, some rim suspension. Um, did some interior work, really minor stuff, uh, like some seats and uh, carbon fiber uh, trimming and uh, little system. And the big thing is a, a turbo that we put in um, last year. This one right here is 95 Eclipse GS. Uh, pretty much touched everything on it. Uh, motor is a non-turbo motor. We put a turbo kit on it from Han Racecraft. Um, interior was all redone, all fiberglass and carbon fiber, uh, different mufflers, you know, just every aspect of the car was touched from the seats to the roll bar to the dash, gauges, we replaced the gauge cluster with our own custom one. Um, all the wiring was redone inside the vehicle, lights, you know, anything, anything that make it look a little bit flashier. And there's people spending hundreds of thousands of dollars out there now. It's just, it's crazy, you know, SEMA cars that are $100,000 plus Civics, Accords, Integras, RSXs, WRXs, I mean, it, it gets crazy. You know, if you want to compete, you have to spend fifty or $60,000 to, to compete or to be, to have a car that people are going to take two, two glances at at a car show nowadays. I mean, if you don't, people just walk right by it. If you're dealing with a car that uh, has a lot of aftermarket alterations to it to make it go fast and uh, the ground effects and things like that, depending on how it's altered, most of the companies won't insure that vehicle. The state of Illinois does not allow um, modification of the vehicle under certain circumstances. You can't change your uh, exhaust system to make more noise. You cannot modify your uh, bumper to be more than three inches higher than what it was the manufacturer designed it for. You can't have add tinted windows to your car so nobody can see who's in the car. The reason for that is if the police stop you, they don't know who's in the car. and. This could be a safety hazard for the police officer as well as the citizen, because if the officer sees a tinted window, the officer is going to be prepared for the worst. Safety issue. The number one safety issue is the possibility of uh, running into some uh, passerby, specifically a pedestrian or a car with somebody with their uh, their family in the car. Racing should be in one place, and that's on the track. Uh, does street racing happen? Yeah. Uh, is it ever going to stop? No. Street racing's been around for 
you know, longer than I've been around. You know, that's that's something that's always going to be in our culture and it's always going to be there. When I was much younger, it did seem lots of fun. In fact, um, some of these old guys, I probably would have been with them, you know, in my um, heydays with my big block engines. I probably would have been street racing with them. Do I street race? Absolutely not. I actually never have. Uh, my my focus was always on the track, like my car, and I, I never even, my car was always too crazy to go on the street, so I would have my daily driver, which was a truck or whatever. So. Honestly, on the, on the street, I, I don't do any street racing. I never hung out with all the kids that do that. Um, I think it's cool to watch sometimes. I think it's very dangerous and stupid. Um, I don't condone it at all, but I see the whole thrill in it and the whole money aspect, and you know, it's, it's definitely died a little bit. It used to be a big subculture. Safety features, you pretty much take them out. You know, there are a lot of guys that are putting the uh, TVs and the stand wheels. They used to have an airbag, you know, you really don't want to drive that car on the street. And when you start playing with the suspension, you know, it. most of them are street legal, but you know, you don't really want to drive them every day. Well, whatever is built in is probably taken out, so I know a couple of my friends have ABS, but they, they find a way to take it out just to get better control of the car. If you want to make it a little lighter or something to that extent, you might take out something that's a little heavier. It might save your life someday. I read someplace it takes a seventh of a second to kill somebody with a car. Well, if you're going faster than you normally should be going, or your car is more powerful than is uh, intended, uh, this could increase. With having a high-performance import car on the street, you and you know you ha you make more horsepower. Means that means you need more stopping power. Well, wiring's probably the biggest thing. Is to take a look at a lot of cars, and wiring's probably a major issue. Um, obviously, electrical fire stuff like that. You always got to keep that in mind, making sure the seat belts are bolted in the right place. If you're doing harnesses, make sure they're at the right angles. Um, airbag stuff like that, we want to try to avoid taking those out as much as possible. Sometimes the look doesn't go with it, so we swap them out kind of like we did on this vehicle. Cars get into crashes based on several, for several reasons, one of which is the vehicle itself. The vehicle is not appropriate for the street. Many times people who have cars that are high performance, the, the tires are intended for speed, not for traction in terms of stopping. So the, the driver him, uh, himself or herself may or may not be as qualified as somebody else, but they know how to, how to aim the car, it seems like. Safety equipment affects the insurance. Uh, some vehicles have basic airbags, where some have multiple airbags, and they have a better rating, which reflects in uh, the insurance premium. Um, the safety features I have on my streetcar, which is my uh, Integra, is I actually have upgraded brakes and upgraded rotors. I've also, um, I've kept all of the uh, reinforcement beams in the car. As far as the front bumper reinforcement, rear bumper reinforcement, the uh, door reinforcement beams, I did not remove any of that for uh, lightweight purposes. Um, I use the um, uh, factory OEM uh, seat belts, which is actually better even if you do have a racing seat, you are supposed to use a OEM seat belt um, in the event of a rollover. And I have not removed any of the um, factory airbags, so I, uh, those are very important to keep in a street car. Society has a tendency to evolve and things rotate from time to time. Uh, Things are popular for a while, and then after a while, they're not so popular. Uh, with the price of gasoline going, keep going up, uh, that, that might have a, a significant impact on the, uh, the number of uh, people who have muscle-type cars. I'd say the trend definitely went from American cars to import cars, and then now it's a little bit of both, but more you know, muscle car related, and more uh, beefy, more faster, uh, you know, stuff like that. Not just show, you know, show and go. And I think that's with any industry, truck, car, American car, import car. I think everything's going show and go.